Hello, it's me again, Golf FM, the bag man. It's the 2024 Ping cart bag review. This is the video that everybody's waiting for, let's be honest, at the start of any golfing year. This is the highlight, the Golf FM Ping cart bag review. It's a bit like waiting for the next series of Game of Thrones when that was coming out and you had to wait a year for them to make it. I have to wait a year for them to bring out the new bags. Unfortunately, to sort of throw cold water on the whole thing, there aren't a lot of changes. You've basically got the Traverse, the Pioneer, the DLX and the Pioneer Monsoon and the only one that's really any different is actually the Pioneer Monsoon. There is a tour staff bag but as I talked about in this video last time that's a silly purchase if we're being honest and I apologise to the man that has bought it from this shop because wonders will never cease. Of all the bags that I haven't sold like I've still got the Pioneer. I think this is its third video, right? Will somebody please just buy the Pioneer? It's actually pretty good. Somebody has actually bought the Tour Staff cart bag after my review. Well, all I can assume is they didn't see my review on that. I'll put a link for that up above. Where will it be? There, there, one, one of those places can't remember and you can have a look at that if you want more detail on the three that haven't changed that's the video to watch as well because they aren't any different but I will go through them again I'll try and go a wee bit quicker because I have got a full blooded video on them already so I'll go through them and tell you which one I think's the best as well at the end how about that for an idea pretty radical that eh telling you which one I think's the best at the end but you've never seen that sort of thing before. Right, so Traverse. I want to say the start off with the most boring one, but it's not really boring. It's a quality bag. It really is. What weight is it? Does it matter what weight it is? It's not that heavy, for crying out loud. It's, let's have a look. look it's 2.5 kilograms. There you go. Don't know what. I don't know off the top of my head what else weighs 2.5 kilograms. But anyway, it features sieve waterproof technology in that the water just runs through it as though it is a sieve. That's what I'm told anyway, I haven't actually used it. But somebody that I know that bought one returned it because it wasn't remotely waterproof. I don't know what Ping claim, but you know, you don't get that sort of comment for nothing. If you want something that's decently waterproof, this maybe isn't the one. It's maybe the reason I haven't sold it. This was in the last video as well, I think, was it not? And I've got another couple that I haven't sold as well, so. For all these sort of tens of thousands of views that I'm getting on bags and bag reviews, it's not equating to sales as such currently. But maybe one day, you never know. I need to probably stop saying rubbish things about them. How about that? Maybe I should consider that as an option. So to run through this 14-way divider at the top, nice sort of lightweight, really good pocket space in this. I mean, this pocket here is an absolute beezer. That's a good thing. That's insulated. You could easily fit, as we've discussed in previous videos, a roast chicken in there and keep it warm. This is another good pocket as well. Balls and all that, tees. Really good little sectioned off there. Good pocket in there, sort of furry valuables pocket in there. Card strap goes right the way through here. Really good pocket space. There's a little zip here, and you might think, you might think, what's that for? What on earth is that for? You get your hand into the bottom of the bag. Exactly, you can get your hand into the bottom of the bag. So if you drop something down here, you've got a chance of getting it without tipping the bag upside down, taking all the clubs out, which is a real faff. Yeah, a little internal net pocket in there. So much for not going through it. I'm going through it just the same as I did in the other bag review. Anyway, brilliant pocket, hood's all right, does a job. Can't remember if it's difficult to get on or not. No, I don't remember any of these being that difficult. I'm not going through that. It isn't that difficult. And there is always a hood in it. I like it. It's got umbrella holder at the back, which goes in there. And I think it fits it from memory quite well. Down there. Yeah, it's good. Perfectly good. Loads of space, light, just might not be the best in the rain. And thoroughly recommend £169 roughly. So yeah, like it. How many colours? Six colours. Wow. Just so I didn't get one of each of those. We'd add six by now. Next one in the pricing structure is my old friend. I'll be sad to see when it goes. Actually, I might just throw it in the fire. That might get rid of it. I don't understand why nobody's buying this because it's a really good bag. It's got, I would say, more waterproof material than the Traverse isn't that difficult but it is it's sturdier it, you can see you can feel that it's gonna repel water more than that is the pockets are every bit as good 
if not better you've got more pockets than the traverse that's insulated as well and absolutely massive that's good everything's good about it that's really nice that's better than the traverse because it's magnets on it cart strap goes under there so it keeps it secure on a buggy or on a trolley umbrella holder at the back just a really solid bag Do you know this this would last absolutely years i mean it has absolutely i mean it's lasted years in the shop already so there's testament to its durability little extra wee pocket there hidden and there as well hang on yeah, sort of furry one in there with a wee key strap thing as well. It is, weight wise, it is 3.3 kilograms. So it's quite a bit more than the Traverse, but it doesn't feel that heavy. It's a solid bag. Potential family heirloom. You could, it would last that long. You could just, you could hand this down from generation to generation. Not quite, maybe. Might make a couple of generations. They need to think about renewing it. But it, it's solid. And I, and I do recommend it. Please somebody buy it. On to the DLX, which was a real surprise package for me. I didn't know what to make of this when I saw it in the brochure. And I hadn't really seen a sample of it. And I didn't understand really what it was. And I now get it. It's basically basically a very toury looking cart bag. It's for somebody who's seen my review of the tour staff bag and thought I can't buy that now. It's horrific. It's not fit for human use, the tour staff bag, some of the pockets. This is designed like a proper bag, like some of these other ones, the Traverse and the Pioneer, but with that sort of tour look and a real solid feel. I mean, this really is a potential family heirloom. It's solid, it's weighty, it's 3.7 kilograms and that you can feel that one arm left with nothing in it and you can feel it imagine that with clubs in it roast chicken vegetables golf balls because you've got a really big cooler pocket again in here i actually did sell one of these last year which was i think based on what how good i said it was in the review which imagine that imagine that happening so that's a good pocket very good cooler pocket massive little Oh, that's lovely. Didn't even, I've forgotten that. That's magnetized. I like a magnetized pocket. And then zip up here, sort of valuables one in there. Cart strap goes around. It feels quite tight, like it might be a bit of a struggle, but it is there if you want to do it. All of these go on trolleys, all of them go on buggies, no problem. They're absolutely fine. All the shapes, you don't need to panic about that. You don't need to fret about that, you can safely buy them and they will fit on power trolleys, push trolleys galore. You can rest easy with that. You know, all the bases are cut away like that nowadays. You, you, they don't interfere with the bottom of trolleys and that sort of thing. Umbrella thing at the back, feels a bit tight, but I think, I think it goes in no bother. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And 14 way at the top, 14 way at the top with a putter well for big massive putters in there. Really, really like it, really like it. I know it's quite heavy, but I don't care. I still think it's a solid bag. I think it looks really good. Massive sort of tour writing on the side. And yeah, it was a real surprise package and I still really like it. It is 219 pounds. So it's a bit more expensive than the Pioneer. Pioneer's 199. Pioneer's just sort of a bit of a lighter version of, of this. And maybe this is a tiny bit better in the rain, I would say. But this isn't waterproof either, obviously. Not fully. That's to come. So, sorry if that was a bit fast for me, but there is, as I say, a longer review even than the one I've just done. It's long enough in my book. Um, in the other video. So, and on to the Pioneer Monsoon, which is the only one that's changed. Oh, can I say, look at this. I can't believe I nearly forgot this. How could I forget this? Look at this. What on earth is that? That, my friend, is a shoe holder, which you didn't know you needed in a bag, but you did, you did. So I'm gonna get a shoe. I'm gonna say Echo S3 in there. Do a review on that soon as well. So there you go, shoe in there. You can't lose it either, because it doesn't go back underneath the pocket. It just, I think that's actually quite a good idea. I don't mind that. You know, if you're sort of leaving them somewhere and you're going in for a drink or whatever, and you just think, I, I want to change my shoes, get a bit muddy or whatever, put them in there, bang them together a bit, and then put them in there, and away you go. Yeah, so I like that, I like that. Nice little touch. Pioneer doesn't have that, unfortunately. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but 
you know, it's nice. So Pioneer Monsoon. This is the only one that's changed. And the main thing with it, this is waterproof, by the way, completely waterproof, apart from the massive hole in the top. And it's 269 pounds and it is 3.1 kilograms. So it's the second lightest and it's fully waterproof and it's 269 pounds. So it is the dearest, but it's not like double the price or anything. And, and that's why I gave this the win last time because it was slightly different but thought it was all in all the best most recommendable cart bag in Ping's range so let's have a look at the new one first thing I want to check is that they haven't taken away the best feature the world has ever seen and that was the hidden shoe compartments and if you look here it has still got them mesh pockets in there how on earth are you gonna survive without shoe storage in the back of your bag so yeah and then it's hidden i remember i said last time that I don't do the same jokes and that but i was imagining you could have put them in there gone out to play put your stuff on this and you can't for love nor money find your actual golf shoes and you're having to slip and slide and play in your uh, street shoes it's not probably gonna happen but stranger things have happened so i love that I love that and it looks like, you know, I'm not, do I'm not doing the same jokes, it's different. If you want to see those jokes, do, are they jokes? I don't know if they're jokes. Watch the other video because I need to come out with new stuff for this. What I would like to say with this is, right, get back on track for us, get back on track. So we need to go through the pockets because people want to know if this is good or not. So 14 way top divider, you've got big large putter well there. Pocket here, now you ready for this? Waterproof bag. This is not a waterproof pocket. Couldn't believe that when I saw that. Waterproof bag, first thing you look at, this is not a waterproof pocket. Now I get why it isn't, but it's just bizarre that it says that. I realize they have to cover themselves because you might put your precious phone in there and that thing, and then it's ruined. And you thought, hang on a minute, I bought a waterproof bag and you've ruined my phone. So they're telling you that it isn't. Just hopefully you do read that. This is so the whole thing can come off and get a badge on it, like the logo, which I never bother doing, to be honest, because it never used to sell. I have a hard enough time selling the bags without putting something on them that's going to make it harder to sell. So I don't need to do that. On the last bag, it was just, that's the last bag, see? Same bag as before, I haven't sold it. Even though I said it was the best bag in the range, nobody's bought it. They bought the worst bag in the range. That's the one. So obviously it doesn't matter what I say. In fact, just say the opposite. This does the monsoon from last year and it was just a, a sort of sleeve in there. You could, it wasn't shut, it didn't shut. And that can come off as well. It was Velcroed on and you could, logo that as well so they it's the same thing really but i suppose they've given you a zip around there instead of but it's effectively doing the same thing they'd probably just have been as well keeping it just a sort of open pocket but i do get that it doesn't need to be waterproof you know it doesn't it doesn't it's not a problem that I feel it's a wee extra pocket that it's a sunny day and you and you can use it right so this pocket's good does it feel the same as the last one let's do a wee comparison with the last one here yeah, on a par with it, fine. It's got a little filing pocket there and it doesn't have anything up here, so that's an improvement. That's the same as this, I think. Yeah, that feels good. In fact, that feels even slightly deeper. Good. Pencil thing in the side, wee mesh pocket in the side. That doesn't have a wee mesh pocket on the side, but then you've got this instead at the front and that this bit is probably better than that mesh bit cart strap goes around here underneath that's probably the easiest one to do out the lot so i think that was another reason i gave it good marks in the last one some of these feeding through cable things it's a good idea because it keeps everything steady but they can be just you can be in a rage by the time you go off trying to do it you know and bleeding hands just could drive home you know because I, I had such a bother getting that cart strap on that I, I just decided to jack it I couldn't be bothered so this that's not going to happen with this because that's actually perfectly easy to use the pockets on this when I initially felt inside here what I'm looking for in a waterproof bag is I don't want to feel tightness I don't really want to feel tightness on any golf bag I don't want to feel like it's going to rip I don't want to feel like I'm just going to struggle to get stuff in it I want it to feel easy 
That is a shorter opening. That's a short opening than that. That is slightly wider and easier to get in. This is not really bad, but it's not quite as wide as that to get into. There's loads of space in here as well though, but it's fractionally tighter than, than it was. And that one in there, fine. I think it's possibly, it's bigger, bigger. It's quite way bigger than that one. That was not that useful. Stuff just feels like it's gonna fall out of that. Even though, remember, the bag's on a slight angle, so it's not as bad as when it's standing up. Although you will be opening it sometimes when it's standing straight up. But that's actually a really usable pocket, so that's an improvement. But they just need to watch them, try and make them as much give as they can if I was giving them any advice. Not that they want my advice. So is that it? It's got an umbrella strap thing. You can tighten it with that. Keep it on. There's four colors in this as well. Oh, actually there is something. This is one of the big changes actually on this bag. They've put the rain hood in one of the shoe compartments. So that comes out here and it's permanently attached in there, which is an absolutely brilliant design. They used to do this on a Wilson bag years and years ago where it came out of a pocket and it was permanently attached so you could never lose it. You could never put it in the wrong pocket. You could never take it off and leave it and not put it back in again. It was always with you. So that is a brilliant design. The only thing I suppose is that, is it gonna compromise on putting a shoe in the pocket? Don't think it's gonna make that big a deal. Can I get the shoe in and that? It's a bit tighter obviously with that in it, but you can do it. So you can still put your shoes in there. But yeah, I love the way that comes out and it's permanently attached. You're always gonna know where it is and you can get at it really quickly. And I suppose it's a good design for something where you might actually be using the rain hood quite a lot because you're gonna potentially be playing in all weathers if you buy this bag. So you're gonna need a rain hood that easily comes out. So yeah, another really good design in there. So I really do like it. And I think it is a slight improvement on the last one, even though there's one tiny, tiny drawback for being really picky. Re remember this is me being really picky. If you've not got them back to back, you won't notice the difference. But that's frankly tighter getting in than that one is, than the old one. But as I say, there's tons of room in here once, you, once you're in, so you don't need to worry about that. It's a really well laid out, solid looking bag and the zips look sturdy. They don't feel like they're ca catching at all. It's probably as good a zip feel on a waterproof bag as I've felt because that is the weak point on a lot of these. The zips go, this, you can only have one going up and down, otherwise it's gonna compromise the water getting in and out. So, you know, sometimes people, it feels like it's catching, you sort of pull too hard. You can almost rip the whole thing out of its housing and it starts to leak water because you've been essentially ham-fisted with it for want of a better word. So these zips look really sturdy, feel really, really good. Yeah, and it's just that slightly strange. This is not a waterproof pocket. The start, but it's not that funny really when you think about it. Right, so I'm going to do last to first place in terms of what I think you should buy, but you've all have your own criteria, like I'm not playing in the rain, so I don't need a waterproof bag. And I don't play that much, so I'm not that bothered about it being waterproof, or I live really close to a desert and it never rains. So that could just be out the window as a consideration. But this is mine, right? This is based on, I suppose, living in Scotland where the weather's horrendous at best most of the time. Windy, rainy, sunny, snowy, hailstones, all in the one day sometimes. And this is based on what I think the best bag is. So in fourth place, sorry to say, Traverse. And you know you're getting an honest opinion here because I've got, I think I've got three of these in stock and I'm saying that. But that doesn't mean it's bad. You know, as it is, I think this is a solid, solid bag, but it's not meant to be waterproof and it's not gonna do that good a job of keeping the rain out. So it's lightweight, it's really well laid out in terms of pocket space. And it's because it's a ping product, you're always gonna get high quality. So it's gonna last. Zips are good, stitching's good, everything's good. I've never had anything back like this from ping. Always good. So fourth place, but might be better than every other bag on the market in its category. So don't think it's bad and don't get upset if you've got one of these. Don't be sad, okay, because it's fourth. It still could be as good as it gets in its category. Third place, the Pioneer. I've done it to myself again, probably got another year. We'll see this in next year's edition. The other thing that's happened as well to keep this thing reappearing is it just stays in the range. So maybe Ping are having as much trouble shifting them as I am. I don't know. Anyway, I don't understand it. It's one of the great mysteries of golf as to why this bag is not selling. 
because I haven't absolutely slated at any point in time because I think it's good. I think there's loads of good things about it. Nice pockets, really solid, really nice, high quality feel about it. Not a bad bone in its body and yet here it is. Can't get it out the door. If you've got a Pioneer, you'll know probably better than anyone else how good it is. Share that, please. You know, for my sake, if nothing else. And let's see if we can get rid of this for the next video. I don't want to see this in the next video. In fact, I would just prefer Ping just changed it and I was forced into showing you a different one. Really good bag. Absolutely fantastic bag. And it's going to make somebody really happy because I'm going to eventually have to sell this for peanuts. And they're getting a quality bag for very little money is probably what's going to happen here. So don't be sad if, again, if this is your bag and it's in third place because you've made a good choice. So what's it going to be? Is it going to be Pioneer Monsoon in first place or is it going to be DLX in first place? I feel like I'm almost being controversial just for the sake of it, but I almost want to give this to the DLX as the number one. How I can say that a 3.7 kilogram behemoth, is a word, is better than this lightweight, waterproof, all singing, all dancing bag that's 50 quid dearer. I don't know. There's just something about the DLX that I like. It's just, it's got this real solid feel. A bit like you get when you buy a tour bag, but just a sensible tour bag. Something that's actually, you can work with. And it's gonna last and last and last. Only thing about waterproof bags is by their very nature, what they're made of, it's just not as hard wearing. So you won't get as many years as you'll get out of this. Now you will eventually get water going through this. It's not waterproof. And if that is part of what you need to happen in your golfing life, that you cannot get anything wet when you're playing, then you need to stick with the Pioneer Monsoon. And it is, we're talking infinitesimal differences here. It's just personally me, I kind of feel I want to give it to the DLX just because only downside I was thinking was maybe that's slightly tighter than it was last year. If that had been the same give as last year, and it's not bad, I felt a lot tighter, horrible pockets than that in my life, then it probably would have been Pioneer Monsoon taking the title. But I think it's worth giving the DLX the title this year, albeit by a very, very narrow margin, a sort of six hole playoff, took six holes of sudden death and they fight it out. It was that sort of closer call, but yeah, I'm gonna go for DLX. So of the whole range, this is the one I'm recommended the most. It's a slightly radical call, but I'm sticking with it. But as I say, small amounts, small amounts. So hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was educational, inspiring. Inspiring? How could it be inspiring? I don't know. Inspiring to go out and buy a certain bag, I suppose. Inspiring. If you've got any questions about these, put them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And once again, thanks for watching. Much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.